we had to uh, limited options. We needed new ships. We didn't have an option to go for new buildings because of the length of time it would take. It would take at least a minimum of five years to build new ships and our service is in need of uh, new ships and added capacity much before that time. Uh, so we made a decision in partnership with the Stena Group to take these particular vessels, which are excellent vessels from a, uh, a capacity side and a, and a modern, efficient vessel perspective, to take the vessels and convert them into uh, excellent people carriers. In good time before the vessel arrived at the yard, a thorough design work was performed, including structural strength, capability to add new topsides, adjustments of all domestic systems on board, such as ventilation, fire safety, etc. All this work has been scrutinized and approved by both the Maritime Administration and the Classification Society, and was the basis for the contract specification with the conversion shipyard. Today the first movement of the ship was carried out. This moved the forward section one meter forward from the actual section that's to be removed. The deck's been opened up to allow access for the new accommodation which will be delivered by the floating crane. The first section will position on this side and this side of the ship and create the new deck seven above us to reach in with the accommodation here. As you can see, the accommodation has been opened up in, on most decks in preparation for the new accommodation to be added. The next stage of the operation is to actually remove the old sections. This will be done in two stages, deck five and part of deck three going off in the first stage, and then the crane will come back and remove the actual lower sections, deck three, deck one, and the hull. To cut the ship and shorten it is not a very common modification. However, it has been done a number of times in the past. The principle of removing a section of the vessel and welding together the forward and the aft part again is really following the principles applied when building the ship. During the construction of a new building, a number of sections similar to the section now taken out are being welded together in a dry dock or on a slipway to form the shape of the ship. What we have done is to remove one of these 12 meter sections. The welding procedures and the quality control is exactly the same as for a new building and this will ensure that the final quality and strength of the shortened vessel will be no less than the original vessel. the lower section of the ship's hull being removed. This section weighs 300 tonnes approximately. As you can see, it's come from the dock bottom and is now level with the original deck five. The crane behind is a 600 tonne crane, which is floating on the other side of the shipyard. At the moment, it is slowly bringing the actual section out. And as they get it free from each part of the ship, carry on moving up until they get cleared of the actual dock wall and then they'll take the block out to sea on the far side. Once the two sections are cleared and we then have our 13 metre gap between the forward section and the aft section, then the operation will begin to move the ship back together. The first stage of that operation is to move the ship approximately 13 metres back, leaving around about half a metre gap between the two sections. Once the vessel's in that position, then the final checks for alignment and paralleling will be carried out and the steel prepared for welding. 
Once we're sure the vessel is parallel and fully prepared, then the final stage of the operation will be to move the vessel back the final half meter and actually bring the vessel to the point where it can be welded. I think it's fair to say neither Stena or Marine Atlantic thought that these ships could work because they were too long and they didn't have enough capacity for the number of passengers we need to carry. But uh, we followed on with those conversations and in time between Marine Atlantic and Stena we were able to uh, develop a concept. Our role in that has been as a partner. We've helped uh, co-design the vessel. so. Although Steno brings all the technical expertise to the table, it's the, uh, the cooperation of the Marine Atlantic people, managers and, and technical people with the Steno group that have uh, developed the, the concept design, moved the concept design into actual detailed uh, specifications. And uh, Steno came to the yard to, uh, with the contract and our people have been here in the yard from an oversight perspective. Uh, because we, we've been here from the beginning to ensure that uh, as the project proceeded, all the adaptations that were required to meet our, our service demands were made. And as well, we're here, of course, to safeguard our investment in the vessels to make sure that they're technically sound and uh, we're actually getting the product that we expect to get. There will be several new features on the ships resulting from the conversion. In addition to the new and higher passenger capacity, there will be new cargo access equipment, making the ship fit in all three marine Atlantic ports, as well as automatic mooring functions, enabling a fast and secure mooring of the ship in all weather conditions. Another important characteristic of the ships is their capability to maneuver safely in and out of the port, and therefore extensive research was carried out in the design phase to enhance the maneuverability of the vessel. This included, among other things, computer simulations in relevant operational ports. As a result, a third bow thruster was added, and this in connection with the shortening of the vessel and the high efficiency flap rudders will give very good maneuvering capabilities in the sometimes narrow ports where the ships will be operated. For all large conversions, the characteristics of the ships will be scrutinized and approved by the maritime administrations, with reference to the international SOLAS legislations, which are the international safety rules for ships design and construction. The Blue Putees and the Highlanders will in fact even surpass these rules for intact and damage stability. In conclusion, now seeing the Blue Putees and the Highlanders being finalized, I can conclude that we have, in cooperation with the Marine Atlantic team, converted ships designed to fulfill the high expectations of Marine Atlantic and their customers, both as to passenger comfort and service, as well as their safety. The Atlantic Trader was a, uh, primarily a uh, freight vessel carrying tractor trailers with a passenger capacity of 300 people. We've taken uh, the vessel and turned it into a people carrier plus a freight carrier and we've now brought the total passenger capacity including crew to a total of 1,000. Taken a vessel and, and totally reshaped it, reformed it and everybody agrees that the sister ship sitting across the way there and this ship is entirely two different vessels with the exception of it's the same hull and the same machinery. Thank you.